Hey everybody, welcome to Drive Through Review 362. Today we're going to talk about the Brew Crafters Travel Card Game, which is sort of the little brother of the Big Bad Brew Crafters board game. Now, in this game, uh, which I will be viewing next, by the way, uh, in this game you are running a brew pub, and through the use of cards, you're going to be adding to your brew pub's personnel and also brewing uh, different beers. So let's jump into how the game works. It's a very simple, straightforward card game uh, with some strategy, and uh, let's look at how it works, and I'll tell you what I think of it. So let's look at what you get in the game. Well, in addition to the two pages of rules, of course, you're going to get a scoring track, and you'll notice that there's actually only three scoring tracks in here but there's four player aids even though the game goes up to four players that's because when you play four players you play as teams and so you only keep track of two teams or the points so the game will actually end as you start to accumulate reputation and then once somebody hits 21 points the game end will trigger and then any players who have not yet had a turn that turn will get to take their turn and then the game will end so you'll want to hand this start player card to the start player and everybody does get an equal number of turns and then here we can see there is actually a player aid and this shows you the recipes to brew uh, the different types of beer so you can see this costs uh, hops and two malt and a yeast and you get three points for it all the way down to the special which has a whole combination and then also some of these more rare type goods and you can see the rarities here there's 14 malt 14 hops 10 yeast four fruit and four coffee in this main deck of cards. So you're gonna start the game, you're gonna shuffle these cards up, and then each player is gonna get four of these cards, and then you're gonna have some here face up on the table. So let's take a look at some of these cards here. I've dealt myself a starting hand. There's a couple of things to note about the card. One, it can be used for this particular type of ingredient. It has here a special ability if it's played as a worker, and you can see it is a worker type of card. If I play that in front of me, then it will give me the special bonus ability. Here we've got another worker type. This is called the night shift. Here's another special ability, and this one can actually be used as an apple when trying to brew. And then here we also have an equipment card. You can see it says it's equipment. It can also be used and discarded for that resource, as well as giving you this other special ability of plus one point for brewing each of these different types of ales there. And then here we've got a similar bonus for getting certain amounts of points for different types of brew. And again, it can be discarded for that type of resource. So how does a turn work? Actually, it's very, very simple. You're gonna do basically the same thing every turn. Now to start the turn, you're gonna draw two cards and you can draw from the face up supply or off the top of the deck. Now you're not going to replenish back into the supply until you're done drawing. So maybe we'll draw, oh, let's say I'll draw this card and this card here, and these will go into my hand, and then I'm going to replenish after my draw step. And then I have three options what to do with my hand of cards here. First of all, I can pass if I really want to. Second of all, I can take and put one of these cards in front of me. So if I put uh, this malt expert here in front of me, then again, I would get this bonus point. Now I already have, let's see, two of these uh, ale and porter specialists here. So I can't ever have the same named card in front of me. I can only have one of those. Now you'll notice that these cards are the same in name and special ability, but their ingredients are going to be different. So, but you can't ever have more than one of these. So let's go, we'll go ahead and put the ale porter specialist in front of me. Now it's done and that's my turn. And then if I had more than seven cards in my hand, I'd have to discard down to seven cards and that would be my turn. Now the next option I could do would be to score points or basically brew a beer. So let's say I wanted to brew uh, this ale. I'm gonna need uh, one malt there. I'm gonna need two hops there. And then I'm gonna need a yeast there. So I would discard that and then score my three points. However, I can if I want, let's say I didn't have uh, this yeast here. I can if I want take two of the same type of card and substitute any of those particular ingredients on a brew. And if I score that, then I'll go ahead and just move my marker up three points or however many points I am to be awarded. And again, if I have more than seven cards in my hand, I've got to discard down to seven cards and you keep playing and playing and playing until somebody hits 21 points, triggering into the game. And that is the whole game. Okay, so what do I think of the game? Well, there's two kind of points. One, it reminds me a lot of Splendor. Now, if you played Splendor, you basically are doing two things on your turn. You're kind of taking things to be able to score points or you're scoring points on your turn. In Splendor, you're taking gems, maybe reserving a card, and then building up to a point when you can capture a card and get some points in front of you or so on. 
This is very similar. You're basically either playing a card in front of you for a special ability, or you're discarding a bunch of cards from your hand to score some points. Uh, but you're looking for synergies there, because some cards were going to give you bonuses for a little bit of the cheaper to build, uh, cheaper to brew uh, beers. Some are gonna be helpful on the more expensive ones. Some will give you some end game bonus points, like one point for each equipment or one point for each worker in your tableau in front of you. Uh, but it's very simple and plays super, super, super quick. And it has that whole kind of, you know, oh, if I just had one more turn, I could have had 21 points or beat you. But, you know, you discarded that little bitty batch there to kill the game off very quickly. And, you know, I already had my turn, so that's the end of the game. And so it's kind of like Splendor like that, where you get cut off at the knees and you can't get be able to, like, deliver your batch of goods for whatever recipe you're trying to fill. Uh, but it's cool, it's very light. I like that they call it the travel card game because it's fun and interesting, but there's not really like a whole ton of strategy, but there is some interesting dynamics and sort of paths that you can try to pick. And similar to Splendor, and I hate to keep comparing to Splendor, but it kind of rings true because there's kind of like three maybe paths you can do with this. You can go for kind of, we call it the brewmaster path, and that's to go after those big special reserve recipes and you get a big chunk of points. So you get six points and then maybe some bonus points on top of that. And so, you know, you get eight points three times. You know, there's your 24 points. You're already over 21 points. So you can kind of go for the big massive batch strategy. Or you can go for that little, you know, penner, ale, boom, boom, boom. And then you get like five points each, which is only one point less. You know, if you've got some bonus special abilities, then the big batch and it costs you way less cards to do. So you've got that kind of tack that you can do, and you look at the cards in your hand, and it's like, okay, what are these giving me bonus for? Are they giving me bonuses for the little bitty ones or the big ones or whatever, or maybe letting me pay for the big ones with less resources and things like that. So it's very simple that way. You go, okay, I'm gonna try this one and see if it outbeats you and you know I outrun you to 21 points. So very simple, very cool, but I have a lot of fun with it. I like the personalities on here. You know, I like, you know, these are actually real people uh, that are, I think, friends with the Dice Hate Me crew or part of the Dice Hate Me crew. So that's interesting too, because you kind of, oh, these are real people. This is could, this could be their day job or something. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. Um, you know, but it is, again, it's kind of thematic. It's a nice little kind of companion game. I don't think it's gonna blow your doors off or anything, but it is very quick and it's very travel and compact and you can just throw it down and play cards and go and go and go and go. And it's fun, it plays quick and it's got that little nice thing at the end, which is why, you know, it kind of rings true to me and it's fun and I'm gonna keep it is, uh, you know, he's got, oh, at the end, you know, <laughs> it just gives you that one little moment, about 20 minutes to build up for that and like, yeah, I got it, I beat you or you just beat me, you know, by a turn or whatever. And so, uh, and again, he's got the, you got that sort of, I set my plan. I'm going to do this quick one. I'm going to do these big batches and then we're going to see what happens. So anyway, definitely take a look at it. Thanks.